Welcome to the LCP Digital Learning Channel. Today we're going to go through some quick tips on how to use Flipgrid. This is going to be a two-part video. The first part is from the teacher's perspective, how to set it up, how to get everything running as a teacher. The second part is from a student's perspective on how they can add videos, how they can add responses and use it from their side. So make sure you use both videos if you're going to be integrating Flipgrid into your classroom. So let's get started. All right, the first thing we're going to want to do is go to flipgrid.com. When I get to Flipgrid, it's going to be asking me to log in. Now, because we are a Google district, all you have to do is sign in with your Google account. So I'm going to go up here to the top right corner, Educator Login. Now, when it comes to this screen, we're going to do Google Login. All right, so now that I've used my Google credentials to log in, it's going to get to my initial setup page, okay? So I'm going to be signing up as a new teacher because this is a test account. So actually, I'm just going to do test, last name, teacher. You can choose your county or region. So I'm United States, gender, age, things of that nature. So I'm going to do technology, date of birth. I'm just going to put January 1st since this is a test account. We'll do 1982, sure. Let's go. All right, so this is going to get a welcome page. You feel free to go through any of the welcome documents that you'd like. I'm just going to exit out of that. All right, so the first thing I'm going to create is a grid. Think of a grid as maybe a classroom or a group of assignments. So either you can have a grid per class period, so period one, period two, or if you teach everything, you could have a grid for math, science, social studies, things of that nature. So left side, I'm going to do add new grid. So maybe this first grid is going to be my homeroom. Okay, I'm going to title that. It's very important when we make these grids, we're going to choose the school email sign-in. The reason I want to do this is this is going to lock down all the videos to only be available to people with an at LCISD account or an at K-12 account. And then I can choose my own code. I'm just going to use the one that Flipgrid recommends. I'm going to click next. Now here is where I'm going to choose what kind of emails can be used in this grid. So I'm definitely going to do the at k12.lcisd.net and at lcisd.net. This is going to make sure that both of those email accounts can be used. So teachers and students using their Google credentials can add to this Flipgrid. I'm going to click Next. I could share this code right now. This is going to give people access to my entire grid. That means anytime I add a new assignment in my Flipgrid, students are going to have access to it. If I prefer to send out just the code to individual assignments, we're going to do that later. So I'm just going to X out of this. Now you can see I have my grid. This pencil right here allows me to go back and add any of those options I need to. So for example, if I scroll up just a little bit, you're going to see some extra features. For example, notify me. If any of these assignments in this grid are going to need me to be the gatekeeper, I'm going to get a notify me. That way I know if anybody's added to my grids, allow download, caption, grid followers, all these kind of things. I can also personalize this grid. So maybe instead of this rainbow, I could do some kids. Maybe this is an ER class. So I could have books, whatever works best for you. I'm going to do the kids update. So now I have my grid built. The next thing I'm going to want to do is have some activities. Now, before we jump into that, let me just show you right here, my activities up here at the top left corner. This is where anytime you've created an activity is going to go there. That way you can add those activities to multiple grids without having to make them again. Up here at the very top, you also have some other options. Mixtapes, I don't have any of those. Grid Pals, but the one I want you to make sure that you see is Disco Library. This is a catalog of other grids and other activities that other teachers have made. So this is gonna be a great opportunity to go in there, play around, find some ones that are already made and save yourself some time and energy. Okay, so now I'm back in my grid. I'm gonna go ahead and click the grid that I'm going into. Now the next thing is a topic. Think about a topic as an assignment. So this is going to be test reviews. This is going to be introducing yourself to the class. This is going to be vocabulary, debates, whatever you're adding that you want students to be able to record themselves and respond to each other. A topic is where you're going to start that. So I'm going to do add new topic. So let's think about maybe what would be the first Flipgrid that I want. So the first thing that I might want to do at the beginning of the year would be introduce yourself. If we're in the middle of the year, this could be attached to any of those learnings that we're doing. So maybe I've read a book and I want students to respond. So maybe this one we're going to be book response. 
Now, this would be a very good idea to also use for test review. I have another video coming out later that will walk you through how I might set this up for a test review in the classroom. The next one would be recording time. This is important to keep in mind how long do you want these kids' videos. We know some of these kids could just go on and on and on. So think about on this book response, do you want it to be quick, 30 second, 45 second, five minutes? Remember, you're going to be reviewing these, so keep it short enough to where you're not going to have a lot of time wasted trying to listen to the kids go on and on. So I'm going to do one minute. Then my prompt is where I'm giving my instructions, I'm giving my ideas, the things they have to and can do, all of those kind of things. So let me add my instructions. So I've done a very short prompt, but you can make this as complicated as you need to. You could even embed your um, grading procedures in here as well. Okay, so now the next thing I'm going to be adding is some focus information. Now, unfortunately, the record a video and record and bring a video in can only be done from a desktop. But I could bring in a YouTube video if I want them to watch the video and then respond. I can upload an image, emojis, or I could even link something from Google into this. So maybe I want to paste a link to a Google Doc, things of that nature that I want them to read and respond to, or any of these other options. Now, Make sure that you notice down here at the bottom there is a more option. When I go to this more, there's a topic tip, but also attachments. So I can add a valid URL attachment. So this is also where you could add something from Google. Next one that's very important, video moderation. If I want to be the gatekeeper for these videos, I'm going to turn this on. That means when a student submits a video before it's live to the class, I have to turn that to active. If you have kids that you don't trust, that you're afraid they may use this and abuse it, this is a good option to turn on so that you can make sure to watch those videos first before you allow students to submit them to the whole class. You can turn these to active or frozen or hidden. So maybe you're working on an activity and you don't want the class to see it yet. You can keep that hidden. That way you have time to work on it without students going ahead and jumping in there. And then if I go down a little bit more, I have some different options for features. For example, can they add a selfie? Can they add titles, view count, editing, attach links, likes, things like that? And then what kind of feedback do I like? I'm just going to keep this as the basic feedback. When I'm ready to go, I'm going to click the create button. Okay, now that I've created this topic, it gives me a pop-up of how I can share this. So I can copy that entire link, send it to them. I could send it through Google Classroom. The easiest way, in my opinion, is to press this QR code button. When I click this button, I can actually even zoom in. Students, all they have to do is I can have that QR code up. When the students scan it, it's going to pop me directly into the Flipgrid app and I can start my responses from there. I can also download that QR code for later use or even put it um, up on the classroom if I need to. Okay, so here I am inside of this grid and now you can see my book response is now active. I have finished that. If I need to, I can press that pencil and I can go back in and add those things if I need. But also, you see that's where a share button is. So if you can't find that QR code, that share button is where you can get all those options to share. Okay, so now that I've had some students submitting some work, you're going to see right down here, once I've refreshed this page, I see that someone has submitted some work. So let me click this work. This is where I can touch the picture, listen to the video. If I approve this video, I can come over here to edit, and then I can actually turn this to active. That way students have access to watch this other video and give their feedback. If I need to edit any of this information, if it's inappropriate, I can edit it right there. If I go back to this feedback, here's what I love. There's some buttons right here so I can star it. I can actually create a new topic based upon this video or this mixtape. If I start finding some really great videos, there's that section, the mixtape that I had that was empty. Once I start adding these, this is basically making a catalog of all of the really great responses I want to save for later. I can also give some grading rubrics or I can just say, great job. Even better, I can add my own response right here. So if I click this, it's going to actually open the app and allow me to give a visual response to the student instead of typing it out. All right, so now that I've turned this active, you can see right here that it says active. Other students are able to see this and respond. If I came into this and a student had responded, right here you would see the pictures of the students have given responses and you're going to go into each of those responses and same thing, edit, 
turn those to active so that other students can see them. If you don't want responses seen by everybody else, if you just want to see them, you can keep those inactive as well. Okay, so that was just a very quick overview from the teacher side on how to set up a grid, how to set up activities, and how to assign them to students. Remember, video two that will post after this one is going to be what it looks like from a student's side and all the activities and um, options they have on that student's side. So make sure to watch both videos so you're prepared to utilize Flipgrid in the classroom. Thanks for tuning in and we'll see you next time.